spastic much? Spasticity. What is it and what can we do about it? In today's video, I'm going to break it down for you. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So It Is Well. It is estimated that up to 80% of people with MS experience spasticity. Does this happen to you? Let me know in the comments below. Let's start with what exactly is spasticity? It is a tightness or stiffness of the muscles as a result of demyelination of the nerves of the brain and spinal cord that control movement. Sometimes it can cause muscles to be stiff or tight and not allow us to move in the way we want. So here's an example. If my tricep is stiff, it will be tight. It will fight against me when I'm trying to bend my arm. It may not move or it may cause a bouncing or a jumping in the arm when I'm trying to bend it. Spasticity can happen in any muscle in the body. Sometimes it's a spasm that can cause involuntary movements. It can range from something as little as muscle twitching all the way up to limbs that jump and move in an uncontrolled way. And this can have a huge effect on our quality of life. It can be mildly annoying all the way up to incredibly painful. Mine is mostly on the left side and it affects my leg the most. Often, I feel like I'm wearing a really tight compression sock around my thigh. And when I've been sitting too long or in an uncomfortable chair, I can get spasms that run all the way down my leg and cause pain and involuntary movement and jerking of my leg. When we experience spasticity, it can cause us to lose sleep, use extra energy to do our day-to-day -day tasks, make us uncomfortable, be extremely painful, and quite honestly, can make us really cranky. So what can we do about it? Quick disclaimer, if you are experiencing spasticity, please check with your doctor on a treatment plan. I am not a doctor and I cannot give medical advice. I can, however, share tips and strategies that may help reduce spasticity and hopefully improve our quality of life. We have control over our diet and lifestyle choices and making choices that support our health and well-being can go a long way to helping us live well with our MS symptoms. So let's start with diet. I know what you're thinking. Come on, Vicki, how can what I eat help with spasticity? Everything we eat has the ability to help us or harm us. MS is an inflammatory disease and neuroinflammation can lead to increased MS symptoms, including spasticity. MS can be influenced by pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory dietary habits. And neuroinflammation occurring in MS leads to dynamic changes in motor circuit function and muscle tone. So to help with this, we can eat an anti-inflammatory diet to help quell the inflammation. There are many delicious foods that can help with this. Some amazing anti-inflammatory foods are foods that are rich in antioxidants like tomatoes, dark green leafy vegetables, and colorful fruits like strawberries, blueberries, cherries, and oranges. And turmeric and ginger, both contain compounds that can reduce inflammation. And don't forget ground flax seeds and walnuts. They are high in omega-3s, which are healthy fats for our brains. Bonus, eating a good variety of whole foods that are plant-based will lead to a healthier gut and less overall inflammation. Along with a good diet is good hydration. Keeping our bodies well hydrated will help, help keep our blood volume up and keep more blood flowing to our muscles. Did you know that low blood volume can lead to spasms and cramps? Many people with MS may restrict fluids because we have problems with urinary incontinence or frequency, especially at night because we don't want to get up frequently to pee but if we get dehydrated, it can cause spasms and cramps, which can interfere with our sleep. Sometimes it's hard to be an MSer. 
Next is exercise. Spasticity can be improved by regular exercise and stretching. I recently started stretching twice a day and have noticed improvements. Doctors are increasingly prescribing exercise to help with MS symptoms. And I recently learned that we need to hold our stretches for 20 to 60 seconds. Who knew? I was definitely not holding my stretches long enough. There are specific stretches for different body parts that can help people with MS and their specific spasticity. I do stretches that mainly focus on my leg and my back, but if you have spasticity in your arms, then different stretches may be more helpful for you. I have found a few resources that I really like. The MS Gym, Dr. Gretchen Hawley, and MS Workouts. They all have free videos on YouTube that can help with spasticity, and I will put links in the description below to those. I also did an interview with Dr. Gretchen that you can check out using the link above, and I'll also put it in the description below. The key to stretching is to do it regularly. Doing it once or twice will probably not help much, but making a habit of doing 10 to 15 minutes of stretching twice a day should help. If we stretch each morning, our days will be better, and if we stretch each evening before getting into bed, we will sleep better. Sitting too long is definitely a trigger for me, and if I'm in a seat where my feet don't reach the floor, which is a lot of the time because, fun fact, I'm only 4 foot 10, it can trigger spasms. And if I'm taking a long flight or a long car ride, I might need to walk around in the plane or take breaks on the drive and get out and walk around for a bit. It sometimes helps if I put my feet up on a footstool. I keep a foot machine under my desk, which I can use to keep my legs moving when I need to sit at my desk for a long period of time while I'm working. And I'll put a link below if you'd like to check that out. Moving throughout the day is important too. Try to take short breaks from sitting still throughout the day. I use my Fitbit to remind me to move every hour, but you could use your phone or your computer to give you reminders. Just a few minutes of movement each hour is very helpful to keep our muscles moving and less spastic. Another cause of spasticity might be temperatures. In the winter, when we're exposed to colder temperatures, we may experience more spasticity. And likewise, in the summer, when we're exposed to higher than normal temperatures, we may see an increase in spasticity. This is called Uthoff's phenomenon, or Uthoff's sign. It is the temporary worsening of MS symptoms caused by an increase in our core temperatures. If you'd like to see more on Uthoff's sign, you can click the link above or in the description below. Short-term temperature changes can cause it too. If I step into the cold ocean or cold pool water, I can get spasms in my left leg that make it twitch and jump, and it takes a moment or two for my body to adjust. Or if I'm barefoot and I step onto cold tile, the same thing can happen. Luckily, my right leg is not affected, so it keeps me from falling over. The next thing that helps me with my spasticity is massages. I get monthly massages and it's incredibly helpful with my spasms. Massages can relax our muscles and increase our range of motion. It can also help with decreasing pain. A review of massage therapy for MS found that spasticity was reduced by Swedish massage. So go ahead and indulge. Schedule those massages. It's an investment in our health and well-being. Another way to help with spasticity is medications. I try to manage my MS symptoms with diet and lifestyle changes, but there are times when Western medicine and medications are helpful. There are numerous muscle relaxers that can help. Check with your doctor to see if they might be helpful for you and which ones might be best for you. There you have it, my dear friends. To help with spasticity, eat a good diet to reduce inflammation, stay hydrated, stretch, exercise, be mindful of temperature changes, get massages, and work with your doctor if needed to get medication that can help you. 
The question of the day is, do you have tips to, to help with spasticity? I would love to hear what helps you. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. The purpose of this channel is to help people with MS and chronic illness live better. To help me reach more people, please like the video and subscribe. This tells the YouTube algorithm that this is valuable content and helps this channel and others to find it. Until next time, be well.